you ever open up the HBO Max app and you get in a message that says, hey, we recommend that you check out King Richard or some other movie like that. That uh, recommendation engine is actually built on top of Snowflake and then powered with Braze. Welcome to Powered by Snowflake, where I interview technology leaders who are building businesses and applications on Snowflake. I'm your host, Daniel Myers, and today I'm interviewing John Hyman, CTO and co-founder of Braze. Braze is a customer engagement platform powered by Snowflake. John, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me here. So, you know, tell me more about Braze. What is Braze and how did it get started? Yeah, so Braze is a leading comprehensive customer engagement platform that powers customer-centric interactions between consumers and brands. Essentially, we help brands use data to deliver great product experiences through personalized messaging. That means that we're sending personalized emails, sending personalized SMS and MMS notifications for brands, push notifications, in-app and in-browser messages and more. So we got started about 10 and a half years ago. And the myself, as long as my two co-founders, had a deeply held belief that there would be a broad adoption of mobile that was going to drive tremendous change in business and society. So this was back in 2011 when we started the company. And we actually have a pretty fun founding story. I met Bill Magnuson, who is our CEO, when we were working together about 11, 12 years ago at Bridgewater Associates. And on a weekend in May, we decided to go down to New York City in order to participate in the TechCrunch Disrupt Hackathon. And we stayed up all night working on a project and ended up winning the, the award in the conference. And because of that, we were given free tickets to attend. So we attended the conference. And one of the people that we met on a sidewalk was an advisor to a guy named Mark Ramazian who wanted to start a company that was all about helping mobile-driven and mobile-first businesses kind of be prepared for customer relationships and kind of growing their businesses in the new world. So all three of us connected and, and we shared this, this conviction. We thought that mobile was going to present huge opportunities. We thought that first, fast growing new businesses were going to be born and built to be mobile first. And second, that even generations old companies were going to be driven by changing consumer behavior that would just transform the way that they deliver products and services. So we wanted to build a company that capitalized on the new technology that was mobile and help the world's best businesses grow through their customer relationships. And so that was kind of how we, how we got started. And now when you fast forward to today, we're helping engage uh, over three and a half billion monthly active users, delivering over one and a half trillion personalized messages every single year. So it's, it's just been a really fun experience the last uh, 10, 10 and a half years. That is a incredible story and incredible scale that you're, that you've built out there. That's, that's impressive. Um, I see you went IPO last year. Uh, tell me about that. And, and how has that, you know, impacted uh, the, you know, the company roadmap? The IPO is certainly a really great positive milestone for us as a business. And we've been working very hard toward building a large generational business the entire time. We've always kind of had our eyes set on, on just helping our customers just deliver, again, great product experiences through messaging. And, and the success has been following us. It's, there's been just a, a tremendous amount of trends that have been at our backs here to, to kind of get that. And so now that we are a public company, that, of course, brings a lot of different um, you know, challenges and, and regulations to our business, but it's also just extremely exciting because it, it really sets us up to be a generational company, one that has the proven scale for businesses to rely on, and one that has the, the capital in order to make great investments to ensure that, that we are the best customer engagement platform that there can be on the market. So when we look at those, those trends that I was just kind of mentioning, when we look into the future, we're really excited about what's ahead. Is one of the, the things that you, know, you and I and all of our friends and families have experienced is that consumers expect now that brands are delivering real-time personalized interactions and that they're doing so across channel. Whether you're using a mobile device, you're using a web browser, you're getting a text message, you're, you're essentially you know, being engaged in any way by a brand, that your relationship now hinges on, on personalization. And personalization is going to mean the importance of trusting data. So we'll get to that later in our discussion. And essentially that we see big trends around, around first party data being effective. You look around at what's going on in the advertising space with Apple and, and Facebook and Google, and it's become extremely expensive in order to acquire new customers. The best dollars that you can spend are toward engaging, re-engaging and continuing to grow your existing customer base. And so what we're seeing is that brands are designing these data-driven strategies that leverage the first party data they have 
And that's exactly what Braze is, is really built to do is help them use that in order to deliver great real-time personalization at scale. That's awesome. So, um, you know, let's see a demo of it today. Yeah, so I'd love to kind of talk you through a couple of different use cases that we have for Snowflake. We've got a couple of different demos in store for you. So Snowflake is used in a number of different ways at Braze. The first of which is that Snowflake actually powers the product um, for some of our features. So we look at Snowflake as a next generation analytics engine for reporting and also as part of our user segmentation features. And this allows us to operate at a huge scale. Last year, for example, we, we ingested and processed over 9 trillion pieces of con consumer generated content and interactions. And so we can store all of that in Snowflake and then use it for, for reporting and analytics. So I wanna just hop a bit into the product now just to show you that. And when we get back from it, I'm gonna pass it over to John Yam who's our senior technical and data consultant. Uh, and I'll kind of introduce what he's gonna be talking about to talk about uh, how we also use Snowflake for data sharing, business intelligence and data services as well. So, um, but first let me just give you a bit of a quick taste on, on what our customers are using with Braze. All right, so if you can see this screen here, what we have is a Braze Canvas. And what Canvas is, is it's a, a very friendly, marketer friendly, easy to use way for our customers to develop multi-day, multi-step, multi-channel messages. We look at Canvas more like a visual programming language for our customers to program how their user journeys are going to flow. Now, what I have here is just a very, very simple Canvas that is set up to deliver different variants to users. So I may be doing uh, A-B testing and experimentation. And I'm not gonna dig particularly too far into configuring this Canvas, but I wanna hop into like where Snowflake comes into play. So as I mentioned, we process a tremendous amount of data, even just the sending of over one and a half trillion messages a year, that alone produces a lot of rows of data and a table for us to look at, let alone all of the deliveries, bounces, unsubscribes, interactions, clicks, opens, and everything else that comes out of that data that we can get in the future. So our customers typically want to analyze how their canvas is performing, especially if they're doing multiple different variations. So we offer a lot of different robust reporting capabilities inside of our product. We have an entire report builder. We fortunately don't have time to get to in today's demo, but uh, that allows our customers to essentially see how everything's performing under standard ROI. But what I have here is just a very simple, quick table of how my different variants are performing. And this information is essentially just a bit of a reformat of what you might see here in the background. So we can put it in an easier to use format, but where Snowflake comes into play is then we can build reports off of this and understand how this canvas changes users' behavior. So one of the things that we offer is a funnel report. And so this report here is powered directly by the data that's underneath in Snowflake, where we can look at things like how users who receive this canvas or enter it, which really is the starting of that journey, then later start a session in their mobile app or make a purchase, work it out this report to then check anything else in a standard funnel. If I want to look at users who perform a custom event, maybe I'm looking at people who, um, you know, like take some action here and kick that off. I can build a report, this kicks off a process on our side then ends up querying Snowflake and then putting it back into our, uh, our, our dashboard here in order to, to process this. So this is taking a, you know, a minute or two just in order to generate, but this is a way in which we can put this, the power of Snowflake directly in our dashboard because we can run advanced analytic queries over large sets of data. Another report that we have is retention reporting. So we can look at users who received this canvas, who then made a purchase, started a session, performed a custom event, et cetera. And we can then understand and we look 30 days out, what does that curve look like for people? So all of this is demo data um, here. So it's not real, it may also be why our, our funnel report didn't quite load because there's not too much data there in Snowflake for it to, um, to maybe have generated on. But this is extremely important and valuable for our customers who are then trying to understand a particular strategy because this strategy could represent an onboarding campaign a, a new upsell, a holiday promotion, a re-engagement campaign for users who are lapsing or, or are at risk of churning. And so they really want to understand what is the value of it? Are we bringing people back? What did they do after they received it? But then also, did this retain people? Did it cause people to purchase more um, or come back to our product later in the future? So that's one great way in which we power um, parts of the product through Snowflake. Another is through essentially just giving our customers more exposure to all of the activities that a consumer has done. So on this tab here, what I have is a user profile of a particular consumer. 
And again, this is all just dummy demo data. So some of it might not make sense if you scrutinize, uh, you know, the, the, some of the fields that they have here in too much detail. But what we have is our customers may want to look up a particular user, say they have support access uh, onto their dashboard for technical support. Uh, we can now populate rows of data um, uh, that we are coming directly from Snowflake. Unfortunately, because it's a demo account, I actually don't have the data to show you here, but um, essentially what we can do is pull all of the email events that this user has done. So we can look at when we sent an email to them, if they opened it, and when they received it or anything there. Extremely helpful for support use cases. You can imagine someone's calling in a support desk saying, hey, I haven't gotten my reset password email. And you can pull that up directly and see, we sent it three minutes ago, but it bounced. Um, it's very, very helpful to be able to kind of analyze all, all the interactions around there. So because Snowflake has all of that data, we can then pull that out and show it to our customers in our easy to use dashboard. And then the last example that I'll show you in the product is something that we call segment extensions. So Braze allows our customers to create different audiences off of hundreds of different who we call filters. These are essentially just ways to slice and dice your audience into granular segments. You could filter off of country, the time that they last used the app, how long they've been a customer for, or any custom data that you sent into Braze. And again, we're processing a tremendous amount of data, over 9 trillion data points processed last year. So you get, it's hard to imagine if you want to really get very granular with this data, like what technologies can you even use to slice and dice this in a, in a very deep way? If you wanted to say, look at everyone who added an item to their cart, what we could do is directly with Snowflake and say, look, I want someone who added an item to their cart um, you know, more than five times in the last Let's just do like uh, 365 days. And what you can do is drill on this further by then looking at properties and say, look, I want to look at one who added an item to the cart called, um, you know, called extra gum. You know, if they're looking for some, so maybe I'm an I'm a instant demand um, grocery delivery service on everyone who's, who's purchased some, some gum and I want to maybe retarget them with Mentos or, or mouthwash or anything else that they might be interested that are related to that. You know, it's really powerful to think about, like, how do you do this at scale? There are, you could think that, you know, oh, we'll just put the data in a database and then just run a database query. That works up until you get to, you know, maybe hundreds of millions or even a billion rows. But we're operating on just massive data sets. And so when we're trying to help our customers parse through data, we have to make sure that everything is built at scale. So this segment extension allows us to take our segmentation technology and then we can add on to that with really complicated, extremely thorough, uh, like essentially attributes um, based on any of the user's behavior. So I have some things here that I just pulled up already. So I could look at frequent buyers, people who've made more than eight purchases in the last 100 days. I could look at SMS engagement for users who um, you know, made a, a specific SMS message response to an inbound phone number more than a certain amount of times. So you can usually really use this to get at consumers' actions in order to then retarget them for engagement here. So you could look at, again, this, this segment may be used by, I'm sorry, this, this audience may be used by a campaign or a segment or a canvas in order to then actually target them. So that concludes a bit of the product demo that we have for Snowflake. But you can see that there's a lot of, of great functionality there and there's a lot that we can continue to build on inside our product using Snowflake because it has all of our data. Yeah, I mean, that, that seems like there's a there's a lot uh, of coverage there in terms of, of the different ways that you can engage uh, or, or manage that engagement with the platform. So that's that's really cool to see. Um, yeah. Can you, can you tell me more about, uh, you know, when you were building out this platform, uh, how exactly did you choose and land on Snowflake as 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 the the data cloud that you built on? Well, so there's two different big use cases that that we evaluated on, and so I, I talked about the powering the product, but there's then a whole other section of things that we want to do. So I'd love to just kind of describe that for a moment before I get to the decision making process. Yeah. Is that we help our customers learn more about their consumers through analyzing data. So essentially what we do is we have a product called Currents that what it does, it continuously streams data to our customers about all the interactions that are going on from their consumer base. So I mentioned again, we might send an email that, that, that could bounce, they could open it, they could click on it, we could deliver an internet message, you could view that internet message. All of those things, interactions, clicks, bounces, unsubscribes, et cetera, 
we're streaming out to our customers in order for them to be able to do their own business intelligence on. Because you can imagine if you're a, a restaurant delivery service, for example, you send yourself an email with, uh, with um, what do you want to order in tonight? Restaurant recommendation, you've got Italian, Chinese, Japanese, pizza, you click on pizza. That value, that information is really valuable because it can help embed, build a better model on, on your preferences to ultimately deliver a better experience to you. So we built this product called Currents. And what Currents does is it allows us to stream this data to our customers. And what I have in this diagram is like a very high level flow of how Currents works. It's very high processing. We use Kafka under the hood in order to stream this out to our clients. We found that what the majority of our customers were doing is they were sending this to some cloud storage provider, say like AWS S3. And then they were trying to load that into their own data warehouse, whether that was sometimes it could be Redshift, maybe it was a BigQuery. Um, but a lot of times we found that customers were trying to load this into the Snowflake. And while it's easy for, for them to do that, that there are ways in which we can make this a lot better because Snowflake offers data sharing. So we built a product that allows us to help our customers unlock their insights directly with data sharing. And so we have on the left, here's the traditional data pipeline of, again, it's going from Braze to cloud storage to data warehouse, and they're visualizing it. But because we're storing our data in Snowflake, we can now just share that directly to our customers. They don't have to build any pipelines. There's no maintenance issues. There's, it's real time. We handle all the GDPR aspects of things. They don't have to kind of worry about that. The marketers can really get a lot of great value. And with this, there's a whole set of our business that's around business intelligence data services. We can help provide support to our customers by helping them identify trends, areas of improvement, insights for their data. We can provide data services so that they can get more advanced with their data. And it's really important to do that because nowadays marketing and messaging is just so data driven. Um, but you know, data by itself doesn't have a lot of value. You really need to come with the insights. So if you, whether you want to look at how your email open rate is changing for users of Gmail or people who have iPhones or what does, uh, you know, like what do your users look like if you want to segment them like very, very granularly and understand the interaction data very, very granularly. This is hard to do. Like many brands struggle in order to do this. So we have a, a data group that helps our customers in order to, uh, to work through that. So we've got a great demo we'd love to show you if we've got a little bit of time. But I just want to keep that in mind for the two kind of use cases we had when we thought about Snowflake. One was what, what can we build our product on top of that we, we think is going to grow with us and scale with us. And then besides that, we think about what, you know, what can we do from a BI perspective? I didn't even discuss all the things that we do in-house. I mean, we, we model our own customers um, to, to do our own internal churn prediction to help improve sales efficacy. We use our product data to identify potential upsells. We use data to understand how we're doing as a company on the OKRs that we set. There's a whole bunch that we care about with respect to data that isn't just about how do we build in our product? There's a lot that we want in terms of running our business. So we looked at Snowflake to try to understand how can we achieve both of these things? How can we build like a data lake that was going to be for the company as well as something that we could then use as part of our product? And we started an evaluation back in 2017. And there's kind of two aspects of it. One is we, we heard about Snowflake from our customers. And so that became this pretty interesting for us to, to take a look at. But we were we were failing internally with the two solutions we had already tried in order to house all of our data. So we tried a, one, a, a data warehouse from a cloud provider, and we tried our own internal Hadoop cluster in order to get uh, to, to, you know, to use both of these, to, to, to go in both dimensions, both for the product and internally. And we were just starting to fall apart in terms of either scale, concurrency, or just easeability of use. And when I looked at this, I said, this is not going to be flexible enough for us to, to build on. So we, we decided to give Snowflake a try. And we did a, a, an RFP. We looked at Snowflake. We looked at a couple of other technologies. We thought about cobbling together maybe another um, Hadoop cluster or a Presto cluster or something else that we could do that's heavily infrastructure oriented. But it, it came to be that when we looked at Snowflake, it was one, just much easier for us to do the things we wanted to do from a data loading perspective, it was very easy to just have Snowflake load all of our data in versus we were managing Avro formats or we were managing uh, columnar database formats in order to kind of ingest that and, and, and the maintenance required there. We didn't have to do that with Snowflake because you all handle all that. And there was just a lot of great support that we had from, from the business. I remember on day one, um, the, we had a solutions engineer coming from Snowflake 
And they helped us do this unraveling of nested data, nested JSON that we have from MongoDB directly into Snowflake, which had been like a huge pain point for us in our own internal systems. And so when we thought about it and said, look, I want to make sure that we're, we're kind of heading on the right horse here, a company that is fully focused on data warehousing and, and so far had shown to be more performant uh, and, and more scalable than the other solutions we're looking at, especially in concurrency. Um, I mean, and again, I'll just say that we, we had a lot of challenges with this. We had to build our own throttling mechanisms and, and, and semaphoring to only allow um, about 15 queries running concurrently at a time on some of our own systems. That was just not going to scale with us. And with Snowflake, the fact that you have storage and compute decoupled, you can adjust this on a per developer basis. We could have each team have their own warehouses. We could have different sizes there. We, we weren't going to have to wait for data to, to load between, you know, copying between different groups. It, it was it was just a, a such a more modern way of looking at it. And we thought that this was going to be a, a great bank for us and made the decision to commit uh, that was about four years ago now. That's awesome. I mean, I love the journey that you took there. And because you really do, you cover a lot of the different considerations when deciding on, you know, a data cloud uh, to build on top of, right? So, and, and I love the fact that that you mentioned data sharing because, you know, I hear that over and over again, how big of a game changer data sharing is because on 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 one end of the spectrum, right? You, you're own, you can see data sharing as almost a, a complete uh, elimination of the need for uh, a an API for just accessing and transforming uh, data, giving access to to a customer, for example, right? Here, you just give yeah. them directly that data, and it's running on their compute and and everything like that. So it's that's awesome to hear. Um, and so you mentioned that there's a there's another demo for us today. Yeah, yeah, there there is. So um, let me just kind of tee that up a bit. So. You know, when we're on the data sharing topic, there's kind of two great aspects of it. One is that we can share our own customers' data to them. Um, and then the other one is that we can help all businesses across the globe better understand their own benchmarks. If you think about the fact, again, we have this massive great data set on, on opens and clicks for things like emails and push notifications. If you're in an industry, let's say you work in, in the travel industry or, or the media or on demand or streaming industry, how do you know if your email open rate is you know, effective or better or worse than, than your industry? You know, like how would you even possibly get that data? You typically would probably Google it, try to look at email open rates. Maybe you get a PDF. You can't really get a lot of data from the PDF. But what we have with Braze is, is a data set called Braze Benchmarks, where we took um, a, a handful of our, our customers' data, um, sorry, a handful of our customers' campaigns, and then use that to segment into about 13 different industries that we can publish data sets that are live and updating with respect to the benchmark data. So you can understand, again, like right along your, your own dashboard, if you're pulling it into your data warehouse, just how you're doing compared to peers. And so that's like really, really valuable for all businesses just to understand how they are stacking up with respect to their email open rates, their engagement rates, their push open rates, et cetera. So I'm going to pass everything over now to John Yam. He's a senior technical data consultant here, and he works with a lot of our customers with data sharing and for internal use cases. So uh, John, take it away. Great. Thank you for that, John. A lot of our customers use Braze and data sharing as the main entryway to get that data into their own system. So all the events that John talked about earlier, we've now using the, the pipelines that you have made it easy for our customers to be able to access it through data sharing. So for example, when a customer sends an email out to their own clients, we have email send events, open events, and these are being continuously updated as their customers are engaging with the different messaging that they are sending them. And the nice thing about all of this is that it's already fully transformed. The customers are able to work with it immediately as it hits their data uh, in their Snowflake platform. And we give a lot of the different rails to enable our customers to be able to plug it into the various systems that they have. So 
they have access to user IDs so they can see how does this interface with other data that they might have in their Snowflake platform. We have access to different campaign and canvas IDs so they're able to drill in. So in John's example that he showed earlier, if we have a full canvas spread, we can take a look at all the different variants that we've sent out messaging on. What are those different steps from within those variants and really start to drill down and understand what are the most important steps in a canvas? What is really driving those important KPIs and those strategic needs from there? And beyond that, data sharing really has enabled our own internal teams to really be able to share data, work on innovations together, as well as be able to send this out. So even within our own instances, as John mentioned, we have many different teams that are using Snowflake to create products, to be able to understand business intelligence, to be able to provide data services. And Snowflake's data sharing capabilities have really enabled us to be able to share all of these different innovations together. So rather than having one singular team developing something, it's going to be in their instance, they're not able to easily move it from one place to another. We could have teams that are working on different innovations simultaneously and then collaborate together with Snowflake's data sharing function. So even if you take a look here, what you can see is that we have numerous different phrase instances that are feeding and coming together so that we're able to just share our different experiences our different innovations and be able to work just that much faster. And then beyond that, just to get to John's point with the Braze benchmarks, what we are able to use with the marketplace provided by Snowflake is be able to host all of that Braze engagement benchmark data in the marketplace and be able to provide that very easily to any of our customers who want to be able to have access. So as soon as you get access to the marketplace, you can just pull in the data from the marketplace and be able to work with it and compare how your own customer engagement is looking against our own brand phrase benchmarks. Um, this has really opened up the ability for our customers who are on the Snowflake platform to be able to easily access this and to be able to start bringing that all together to really create that singular vision of what customers are doing on their engagement across the platform. So that was an awesome demo. Uh, thank you, John, and thank you, John. The um, and so uh, you know, one of the things that you know, seeing all of this, this is pretty powerful, especially uh, with the data sharing capabilities that Snowflake is able to provide out of the box. Um, you know, six months, one year down the line, um, what's in store for your customers? Um, you know, moving forward from here. We definitely are going to continue to iterate on everything that you've seen there. We want to make things easier to use, more friendly, more built into the products. You can look forward to things like improving our reporting and as well as the data services that, that we that we have here. As I mentioned before, we, we want to help our customers make sense of their data, especially when you think about interaction data, it's going to lose value from when you collect it as time goes on at the case pretty quickly. So you really have to make sure that you're using it uh, you know, very soon after you you collect it, and that's true of, of much of personalization. And so we want to make this easier to use, more self-serve. We want to help more businesses orient themselves in a way where they're thinking about this type of thing. And so to that end, like we're going to just continue to make sure that we're building for teams that are interdisciplinary, that have data teams working alongside product teams, alongside marketing teams, deliver engagement. And so you're just going to see a lot of new developments in the space and a lot of continued expansion in the space from what we've offered and um, just, just to kind of prepare for the future where everyone is working, um, you know, with all data sets that they possibly can in order to, to deliver a great experience to their customers. Very cool. So for our viewers today, if they want to learn more about Braze or learn more about you, where should they go? I would definitely say to start with Braze.com, our website. And from there, you can request the demo if you're interested in learning a bit more from our sales team. It'll go into a lot more detail than I did in, in the quick two minutes or so that I gave on the product. And um, also we have a lot of different case studies there. We have great case studies from uh, businesses like HBO Max and Paramatic, which is New York's largest provider of check cashing and financial services. Really cool things there that you can see about how they use Braze and Snowflake to improve their engagement, their recommendations. If you ever open up the HBO Max app and you get in that message that says, hey, we recommend that you check out King Richard or some other movie like that. That uh, recommendation engine is actually built on top of Snowflake and then powered with Braze and Paymatic does similar things with AWS SageMaker. So if you're interested in, in learning about data, machine learning, how that can interplay into personalization, 
when you go to braze.com, check out the case studies page. Uh, you should be able to search there also with Snowflake and with machine learning and just get to those two uh, case studies they have there. And so you can definitely kind of continue to learn a lot more about how our solution works and just what the future looks like with personalization. Well, John, I want to thank you very much for joining me here today. This has been another episode of Powered by Snowflake. And for all of our viewers here that want to learn how to build your next application on Snowflake, check out developers.snowflake.com. Thanks.